policy was always to meet clients at the office. But Derek Platt had insisted we conducted our business at the Pierhead. The last time I'd spoken to Derek was in a pub on Ezel Road. As a former KR player, I hadn't felt particularly welcome. The walls had been decorated with old black and white photographs of LFC and old trawlers. One of the 1980 Challenge Cup final team had caught my eye. They'd never really got over the defeat up that end of town. Those days were long gone now, for both the rugby clubs and the fishing industry. I found Derek stood where the ferry used to run from when I was a kid, back in the days before the Umber Bridge was built. We were here to talk about a missing person case I was making little headway with. Derek's niece hadn't been seen for nearly 10 years. She'd be almost 30 now. She'd fallen out with her father and left. He was dead and her mother wanted to make one last attempt to find her. It was as simple as that. Derek looked out over the water and spoke. I remember when we'd come back from sea and the pubs would have pints already pulled ready on the bar for you. That was some sight, I can tell you. Derek paused before turning to face me. I needed to talk to you away from the house. Try to explain a little better that her dad weren't a bad man. He was my brother. We were products of our environment, I suppose. You know, we worked long hours on the trawlers all in fishing. We'd got them and pass them down to the storage area. Worked longer hours than we should have. Whatever it took to make some money. We left the pier head and walked towards the Minerva. Wasn't open yet. Derek kept moving. Derek obviously had things he wanted to tell me first. There must have been hard times, I said. Derek nodded. It was once it all went. Sold down the river by the government. No more three-day millionaires, I said. No more pints waiting on the bar for you. Yeah, that's right enough. Once it had gone, there weren't nout for the likes of Ron. Who wanted a man who could gut fish? It changed him. And not for the better. Once you take work away from a man, what's left? I could understand that. Ron took it out on his family. Derek nodded. Ron loved them. But he pushed them away, you know. I was lucky. Found a job on a building site and worked my way up. Ron never had anything. No pension. Now. Derek paused. Not even a full set of fingers. There was nothing I could say to that. I looked down at the dirty brown water and silted up mud in the entrance to the marina. Derek spoke. Did you know Ron had a son too? Died from an overdose? I shook my head. It was news to me. Another one we're now to look forward to. Pointed along the riverfront. The old world used to arrive along that riverbank. Not just fish. I mean, you got fruit, veg, coal. Now now it arrives. Look what's become of the docks. One's covered with city shops, one with barret houses, one's got bleeding floating shopping centre on it. He nodded eastward toward Alexandra Dock. Even the one I used to work out of is going from landing fish to farming wind. It's a funny old world, I said. Reckon the new wind turbines will change out? He asked me. Has to, doesn't it? How many chances has this city missed when new industries have been looking for a home? Derek shook his head. They might just give the young ones a chance. You never know. Paper reckons hundreds of jobs. Might give them young lads a future. Lasses too. He laughed. Bloody ugly things though, aren't they? I don't know. What's that song say? You might as well try and catch the wind. I smiled and looked across to where the wind farm rig was parked up in Albert Dock. If you haven't got great expectations, what have you got? Derek put his hand on my shoulder. That's right enough, lad. Then he turned away from me and started to walk back to Minerva. Let's go somewhere warm and get a pint in. I'll tell you everything you need to know about my niece.